All right guys, what's up? Today we're gonna take a look at this FRX by Floyd Rose. And uh, I think it's pretty cool, but it's not without its flaws. So we're gonna get started here and uh, I'm gonna play a little bit, kind of just do some dumb tremolo stuff and try not to get like too stupid with it, but just give you a good idea of, you know, what it does. I mean, it, it does tremolo things, but it's a little bit different than any other tremolo I've ever used. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what's up with it. Go ahead and get started here. All right, Signal Path, Brittone SLO Plus, Tokai LS150 with the Brian Kanahek Sheptone PAF pickups. Going to the Splon 412. Guitar is just going straight into the amp, nothing in the loop or anything like that, just as raw as it gets. And it's got the uh, 421 and 57 on a scumbag speaker in the Splon cabinet. So this is just some clean stuff. <laughs> Overdrive. Okay, so now that the playing's out of the way, let's talk about what this thing's like on stage, what it, uh, what it, kind of how it works, and how it's different from the traditional Floyd Rose that you've all probably seen a hundred times. So the basic premise is pretty much exactly the same. It locks the strings here, and then it locks the strings right there, and you get to do all the whammy bar stuff, and everything's good and stable and in tune. But the way this thing works is actually pretty cool, and the thing I like about it, it it's completely reversible. It's non-intrusive, meaning there's not, there's no route or anything for the springs. Everything is all kind of self-contained in the unit itself. Now down here, there are two screw holes that go into the, uh, into the headstock, but I believe you could probably get by with some really, really good, um, is it VTB? Whatever the, the 3M foam tape that's used for vehicle panels. Um, you could probably get by with that um so anyways the way that it's installed is i'm gonna kind of bring it up here close to the camera so you've got your post here where the bridge would be you uh ordinarily would be and so it rests with some screws that go in here and you can adjust both of these uh black screws right here to adjust the height of the floyd now it also has these back here where the tailpiece would be and it goes into the stock tailpiece holes and this is mainly used to just stabilize the back half of this unit. The tremolo pivots on these two little posts right there like, like this. And you've got your arm tension screw right there. And this is just a push in, pull out, and I've got mine pretty tight. So the other cool thing is it's got this little screw right there. And you can use that to set a stop point where it's essentially dive only. You can hear it tap as it rests back down on that. So this is what I use to allow me to go from drop 
D to E and back without having to worry about the thing going out of tune. Okay, so and the way this actually springs or moves is pretty neat. It's got a fulcrum point down at the front of the edge of the tremolo. And, wow, this is a tough angle to get. Um, it pushes this black rod backwards. And there's a spring in there that provides the, uh, the pressure back towards the tremolo to push it back flat. And you can use this little black screw right there that's going in and out. That little black screw is what you can use to tighten or loosen the spring that sits inside there to get your tension just right. And what this results in is literally the smoothest operating tremolo I have ever used. It's absolutely crazy how buttery this thing feels and just how how there's 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 hardly any resistance to it. It's just such a smooth operating unit. I really like it. So now let's go back down to the headstock and see what's up there. So here is where our locking nut happens. Now I've got the tone vise um, little unlocker lever or whatever it's called right there so I can quickly flip that and jump from E to D or back and forth like that. Then it's got two just normal locking blocks there. Now the thing that uh, the luthier who installed this uh, is Jason at Homewood Music. He's done the work on my other guitars as well. Uh, he installed one of these on a flying V and the thing he noted about this that he really likes about this system is that it retains the factory nut so you can maintain your proper string height, intonation, and stuff like that using your factory nut and this just kind of goes behind it and locks the strings down after it goes through the factory nut. So I like that and then also this little cover can come off and let you get to your truss rod. So everything is really well thought out on this thing and I like that. Okay, so what do I think about this after playing it live? Well, the main thing that I didn't like was the little screw here that you use to set the tremolo height where it stops if you don't want it to be fully floating. It's a, it was a loose screw in terms of it would like to back up or move around just enough that the pitch would be off a hair in terms of the tuning stability. And so what I ended up doing was using a little bit of blue Loctite to hold the screw in place and it has all but cemented the screw in there. It's completely reversible if I want it to be, but for now and probably for the rest of the time that I use this, I want it to be a stop so it's not fully floating. So, I mean, you can sit there and mess with it lightly like that and the screw doesn't move and all the abuse like hitting it, like that tremolo coming back down on the screw top, it doesn't mess with it at all. It stays in tune perfectly. So that's really the biggest complaint that I have and it was an easy fix. So I'm glad that that was, I'm glad that was fairly a non-issue once I figured out what was going on with it. Cause when I was playing it, I was like, why is it just a, sh just a shade out of tune when I was using it? And I would always be having to raise the screw up just a tad. So it was backing off just a little bit. And I don't know if like if my palm might have been resting against it because it's right there where your palm rests. I didn't realize if my, maybe my palm was hitting it or what, but the Loctite, Loctite fixed it. The other thing that I really am not a fan of is that you don't get much adjustability out of the fine tuners. They don't go nearly as far as say like a Floyd 1000 or 1500 and certainly not as far as my Goto 1996. Those things have tons of, uh, the screw is really long on those things. So you get a lot of range with the fine tuners and this, you don't get hardly any. So you kind of have to be relatively on point with your tuning before you lock down the nut. So the third thing I really don't like is this guitar was not really intended to have a locking nut on there. And for guitars that have like a straight headstock or not angled far enough back, which is the situation with this guitar, is it means that the strings don't lay totally flat in the groove of the locking nut. So what happens is when you are tightening these things down, it pulls the strings down a little bit sharp 
and it can kind of be annoying in the event that you have to make bigger adjustments down here and then you run out of adjustment room and then you have to kind of back it back out, unlock the nut again, tighten the string, lock it back down, and then maybe mess with the fine tuners a little bit. It's kind of trial and error to figure out how much the string will go sharp when you tighten it down. But once you figure it out, and it's not all the strings, it's just a couple of them, but once you figure that out, again, it's kind of a non-issue, but one of those things that I wasn't prepared for, but I wasn't surprised when it did happen. So yeah, the lack of adjustability range on the fine tuners, the set screw, that likes to back out or move around and the strings going sharp when you tune and you lock the uh when you lock the nut down those are the only three things i don't like um as far as things i do like i mean it's a great tremolo I, it feels really good it looks awesome in this raw nickel and it matches the uh the sheptone pickup so hopefully over the years that i'm using this the uh the patina that i've got on these uh raw nickel covers will start to form on this bridge and everything will kind of like start looking all nice and and, uh, and aged. Uh, but for now, it's got a really sleek satin raw nickel look and I really like that. Um, overall, I think it's a really cool looking unit. I mean, I've already had a couple of guys at our shows be like, hey, what's that thing? Like they're guitar players and they've never seen one of these before. One guy had heard of it, but hadn't actually seen it. So it was neat to show him and let him, you know, see what it was like. And you know, uh, it's a, it's an interesting little conversation piece for among guitar players. But, uh, but yeah, it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world. It cost about twice as much as a Goto 1996. And uh, it was a little bit more involved with the install than a drop-in Goto was for my other two guitars that had the Floyd um, 1000 and 1500. So the install isn't terrible from what I've read. I didn't do it, but um, from what I've read, it's not terrible, but it's not nearly as easy as swapping a cheap Floyd for an expensive Floyd. So be aware of that. And yeah, other than that, I think this is a cool, it's a really cool product. And it's brought my Les Paul into the... Uh, into the modern age of the rest of my super shredder guitars that I can do all that vibrato work. I mean, I don't do anything crazy with the trim when we're playing on stage, just more light vibrato work or, you know, more than anything. So it's fun that I can do that, but also it added just a little bit more weight to an already very heavy guitar. Uh, so that's always fun, but I'm used to the Schecter, which is heavier than this still. Um, but anyways, Hope you guys like this, and if you want to check this thing out, I will have a link to uh, the Floyd Rose website where I grabbed this from. There's a lot of different color options, which is really cool if you want to really fine-tune your aesthetic um, for the instrument. And uh, yeah, I'll have a link to Bruce's site if you want to check out the Brittone amps that he makes. And I'll have a link to the Sheptone website if you want to check out these pickups or any others that they make. I think they're really good sounding PAFs. Uh, which is why they've been in this guitar for 15 years now. So it's, the old, old gray mare has seen some action, but man, she sounds good. Uh, so anyways, all right, well, that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe and help my channel out. Get that visibility out there and get more manufacturers and vendors to, uh, to send me cool stuff to try out to show you guys. So anyways, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. See y'all later.